Okay, functions class. Most important, awesome thing ever, rotating conics. Woo! Yeah. As you know, uh, we have only two weeks of school left. Oh, by the way, today, this is Friday. Oh. The Friday that you just had me. And now we have Memorial Day weekend, and then we have basically nine days of school. And working backwards, let's see, um, how does this work? Friday, the Friday of two weeks from now is the fun. This is actually kind of boring. Should we just jump in? Let's jump in. Yeah. Yeah. So conics. basically, basically we have only four more days to learn conics. And there was an option of either skip this topic or make videos. And we flipped a coin and it turns out that we're making videos. So this is going to take like two hours. So pull up a chair and get comfortable. All right. First of all, what is the whole point of this entire lesson? Well, I will explain. We have previously seen that if I give you a second degree equation of the form ax squared plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals zero, we have previously seen that this will turn into one of our conic sections. And in particular, uh, and I suppose I have to be a little bit careful about how I do this, so I should say that a and c are not both zero. Because if a and c are both zero, then it's just a line. Which I suppose that is a conic, but let's just for the moment um, suppose that a and c are not both zero. Well, if a and c are not both zero, and a times c is zero, then that's just kind of like another way of saying that either a is zero or c is zero, but not both. And if that's true, we have seen that this is guaranteed to be a problem. And if A and C are both positive, then it's an ellipse. But if they're both negative, it's also an ellipse, because if they're both negative, then you could just move them both over to the other side. So the cool way of saying this is that if the product of A and C is positive, then A, that's another way of saying that A and C have the same sign, then it's guaranteed to be an ellipse. And if A and C have different signs, so the product of AC is negative, then it's a hyperbola. Alright, well, uh, that seems to pretty much settle it, except for one major issue. Far, what is, oh, by the way, there's just a random senior sitting in this room. He's just there so that I don't feel like I'm crazy. There's also some junior taking a test. Hi, I'm random senior Jafar. Yeah. All right, so, um, Jafar, I don't know, A, C, D, E, F, there just need to be something missing? G. Besides G and all the subsequent letters of the alphabet. Um, oh, B. B seems to be missing, yeah. So, uh, that's because when there's a B, it's really terrible. So now we're going to talk about what happens when there's a B. So if you have AX, so this is not the most general form of a second degree equation in two variables. The most general form includes a B term, which we have not previously seen. And basically, when there's a B term, you cry. Uh, and after you cry, then you do what we're going to do for the next two hours. And what we need to be able to do, and which we currently do not know how to do, is to analyze a second degree equation uh, in x and y with a xy term. We do not know how to deal with that. We do not know how to analyze it. Well, it is indeed a conic section, and here is the general idea. The general idea is we have these variables x and y refer to the x and y axes. So here's the x-axis, and here is the y-axis. Now, uh, just trust me on this for the moment. Any conic section with a B term can be manipulated by rotating the axes in some kind of way, such that that term disappears. So, the goal is to find some angle theta such that when I rotate the axes by angle theta, I get a new set of axes. We call this the x prime axis, and we call this the y prime axis. Such that when I rotate 
these new, um, when I rotate the axes, then this B term disappears. So in particular, my overall goal is to convert this equation into a new equation um, where I have, where all the x's and y's are now x prime uh, y primes. So this is x prime squared, and this, this coefficient is different also, it's like a prime. So it's a prime x prime squared plus c prime y prime squared plus d prime x prime e prime y prime plus f prime equals zero. In other words, uh, find new variables, uh, and these new variables are related to the old variables by some kind of rotation, such that um, we can convert this, we, can, we would like to convert this equation to this new equation, and then it will turn out that this is maybe like an ellipse or something. Well, oh, that's pretty bad. Uh, something like that. But it is an ellipse with respect to these new axes, not with respect to the old ones. So this is our overall goal. Okay, well, a lot of this is sort of background. It doesn't really have anything to do with conics per se, but it has to do with mastering these rotation formulas. And there are many, many different ways to do this. And it gets kind of tricky because, well, it gets tricky, you'll see. All right, so first let's establish a relationship between the x and y axes and the x prime y prime axes. And there are about three different ways to do this. And we're going to do all three. Okay, so first step. Here is my x axis, here is my y axis, and uh, then I have this x prime axis and this y prime axis, and these lines are perpendicular. So this is the x prime axis and the y prime axis. Okay, well, let's take a particular point, x comma y. And, okay, so we have to be careful about exactly what it is that we're trying to do here. I have a point, so let me just erase this even. I have a point, and what I'm trying now to investigate is the different ways there are of labeling this point. So, one way to label this point is x comma y. And if I label that point x comma y, what I'm saying is that the directions to that point are you go over x amount along the x-axis and you go up y amount uh, parallel to the y-axis. But that same point can be described differently. It can be described with x prime y prime coordinates. And if I describe this point with x prime y prime coordinates, then those two numbers mean something else. They mean how far I'm supposed to go along the x prime axis and how far I'm supposed to go along the y prime axis. And so the picture looks something like this. So if I do it like this, that is x prime and that is y prime. And doing it the normal way, this is x and this is uh, y. And this angle right here is theta. And so because there's an angle involved, it seems that I should perhaps use some kind of polar-like methods. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. We're going to do polar-like methods. So let's draw, uh, this, draw a line from the origin to my point x, y. And let's suppose that the length of this uh, thing is r. And let's also suppose that the angle uh, from the x-axis to, uh, to, you know, to the line from here to xy is uh, alpha. And theta is the, is the angle of rotation with the axis. Okay, so uh, given that, let's, you probably need to move like at some point, like relatively soon. Yeah. You can center it so that like, it's from here on over. Uh, thank you, Jafar. Alright, so let's come up with an equation for x and y. Well, let's just do it in polar, right? So x is just r cosine uh, alpha. 
and y is just our sine alpha. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. And then I can also give x prime y prime coordinates because what is this little angle here? This little angle here is alpha minus theta, right? Therefore, I can say that x prime is uh, just r cosine alpha minus theta and y prime is r sine alpha minus theta. All right, now what we need to do is we need to figure out equations of x and y in terms of x prime, y prime. Okay, but before we even do that, let's just get the x prime, y prime equations. So, okay, anyway, now it's just a matter of just cranking out some algebra, right? x prime is r cosine alpha minus theta. Everyone should, by the way, you should not be taking notes and like trying to do what you normally do in class, which is go as fast as you possibly can and stay like, stay like three steps ahead of me at all times. So, um, all right. And if I'm, if you're, I'm going too fast, I don't think I'm going too fast, but if I'm going too fast, you know, pause and like do it yourself. Okay, so just like crank this out using the formula. So this is like R um, cosine alpha cosine theta. Um, I guess that's like plus, right? Yeah. Plus R sine alpha sine theta. And then, um, what am I doing again? Oh yeah, then I just like sub those in, right? So x prime is just x cosine theta uh, plus y sine theta. Seems to be that I did that right. Yeah. So that is my equation for x prime, and then I can just do the same thing again. And I have my equation for y prime is going to be, now I'll just expand, or okay, I'll just write it again. It's r sine alpha minus theta, and therefore y prime is r sine alpha cosine theta minus r cosine alpha uh, sine theta. But then we get that r sine theta is just y. So this is just y cosine theta, um, y cosine theta, and then this is going to be minus y, no, uh, x sine theta. Okay, um, so that is one, I think, very clear algebraic way to do this. There is an alternative purely geometric uh, way of doing this. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. But I'd like to get the whole possible rest of the board in that picture if I can. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so there's an alternative picture which looks something like this. Okay, this is a crazy picture. Let's see if we can do this. Okay, so I have some point up here. This point is x comma y. And what the meaning of that is that I go over x and I go up y. So this is x, this is y. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to introduce this new axis. And the new axis has angle theta, you know, with respect to the old one. Okay. Um, and now, what I would like to do is to know how far I have to go in along this x prime axis and how far I need to go into the y prime axis, which suggests that I should kind of like drop perpendiculars or something. So let's do that right now. Let's drop a perpendicular. And um, the question I want to know is uh, how much that is, and then how much that is. All right, well, uh, here we can do some cool things. So this is theta, uh, and so what I really want to do is I want to somehow come up with a triangle which has this as theta. Okay, well, first of all, 
that's a right angle, and uh, these two triangles are similar because those two, like that's like 90 minus theta. So that makes this theta up here. And if that's theta up here, I can start doing some, um, I can start doing some labeling. In fact, what I want is some kind of triangle which, which has y as a hypotenuse uh, with angle theta in it. So now I'm going to extend this line out in such a way, like I'm going to just like continue this line. And I'm basically going to draw, how do you explain this? Uh, I basically just do this, right? So draw a line parallel to um, x prime. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right, thank you. I'm drawing a line parallel to x prime from this point, and I'm extending this line out until they meet. All right, and now think this becomes kind of the key to everything, because then this segment has length, uh, that's y cosine theta, right? And this little guy over here is y sine theta. Um, all right, and now I need to do one more thing, which is I want a triangle in which x is the hypotenuse. So since I want a triangle in which x is the hypotenuse, I'm going to drop a perpendicular up from here, and then I get something which is that this segment is x cosine theta, and, one second, and this segment, of course, is y sine theta, because it's just like, this is just like a rectangle, and then this segment right here is x sine theta, um, so this is also x sine theta. Can I check some Yeah. Um, and so, I think this settles the picture, right? Because, what is x prime? x prime is the amount I have to go over along the x prime axis. Well, according to this picture, it's x cosine theta plus y sine theta. And y prime is, um, is how much I have to go up uh, along the y prime axis. And that is going to be y cosine theta minus x sine theta. Alright, so whether you'd like to do it with uh, polar and some angle difference trick identities, or whether you'd like to do it in one big geometry picture, that's up to you. What we have essentially achieved is a... Um, what we have essentially achieved is a, an equation for, uh, for the x prime and y co prime coordinates of any point in terms of the x and y coordinates and the angle of rotation. Okay, uh, pause. We're going to start a new video in a minute.